the big question which has been asked in urban areas now is what do we do about public transit? The car has obviously ceased to provide the answer. Congestion in most cities is now getting to the point where people are forced to recognize the problem even though they may not want to. It's silly to, for 50 people to use 35 cars to get downtown and park those 30 cars. The alternative would be for 50 people to use one bus to get downtown and to park one bus. It's, it's very difficult to explain to an, uh, a man that he has to get up 35 minutes earlier to take an extended route, stop in every 100 yards to pick up one passenger and let another one off, this sort of thing, when he knows that he wants to go 10 miles from his house directly to downtown. And he also knows that most of his neighbors want to do the same thing. I'm a resident of the dormitory suburb of Ottawa, which is known as the Beacon Hill area. Members of this uh, community, which is outside the city boundaries, had a year ago no public transportation to their uh, main area of work, which was in the downtown core. The uh, only possible alternative was the extension of an existing public transportation service but this area is a two-lane road, heavily congested, and equipped with bus stops every minute. After two years of fruitless negotiations between the local politicians, the citizens of my community got together and through their community association decided to establish their own service. We found a bus operator, and within five weeks of the time of deciding to do something of it, the service was established, making a pickup route through our community, joining Queensway, which is a fast expressway across town, and leaving Queensway to one of the main downtown arterials. The service, which was established with one bus in June 1971, has now grown to nine buses, providing fast, efficient transportation services for 600 passengers a day to the downtown core. When we decided that we needed a bus service and that we couldn't wait for the public authorities to make up their minds and, and do something about it, we started out on the basis that this service has to pay or it dies. In any community, you, you can normally find quite a, a wide range of specialized talent. Uh, three of us in our group are, are transportation economists, so we had a pretty good idea as to costs and, and scheduling problems. We figured that uh, if we were going to provide an express service, we could charge people maybe a little bit more than what they would pay if they travel on the OTC. We had a weekly ticket which cost people 3.50 a week, so it's 35 cents a ride. As well as that, we also had a, a five ride ticket which was valid any time, and this cost 50 cents a ride. When we started, we started with a $200 advance from the community association. We knew that we had enough revenue from subscribed passengers to pay for the first bus for the first week. But from the day that bus started, we never looked back. The frequency of the service is now such that there is a bus at least every half hour between 4 and 6 p.m. and at certain times every five minutes. We find that 80% of the people in Beacon Hill who work downtown now use this service and our gross revenue is reaching $150,000 a year. Thank you very much. I'll try and be quiet. Hey, you guys. Yeah. 
I think we had a rather sort of cavalier attitude in the early days. I remember uh, Monday mornings was always a busy morning for ticket collection. And if something went wrong, one of the ticket collectors slept in or something like that, uh, somebody would run out of tickets. I, I did something even stupider than that. I left them behind one Monday morning and, and uh, not knowing what to do, I issued all the business cards that I had for, uh, for the price of the weekly ticket and uh, we had quite a job collecting them all in during the week and issuing the proper tickets, but at least we got the money. Do you know the back for an express? Five to ten minutes by. This has since all been turned to capital coach lines because we found after the first year and once we were getting uh, 13 bus trips in the morning and evening that it was getting difficult to maintain a volunteer system. This is John Charlotteworth. John is uh, president of Capital Coach Lines. He's the, the guy who's been providing the buses for us and he's done a really good job for us. I remember the first day we operated our bus, I think there were 50 people in it, which is, this would never happen if we'd operated this on our own. We might have had one person, actually. you know, we might have had one to start off with. It would have taken uh, over a year to bring it up to 50 or 60 pounds. the situation where uh, we had very bad traffic and um, I think it was because the bus was, was going very slowly and the, uh, the drain on the battery was too great and the, and the bus stalled and uh, several people got out and they, they pushed it down the Queensway and uh, the driver figured out what was happening and he, he yeah, put the clutch in and we got the thing started again. I, I, I really think that cooperation between the community Well, you needed that help that time. <laughs> We're competing with the private car here. The service must be reliable, but above all, it must be fast. We were initially using drivers trained for school bus runs, and we had to repeat for the first week, you're an express bus, get in the fast lane, stay there. And now all of the drivers perform admirably in this uh, respect. We still got a kick every time uh, Wilma puts his foot down on the Queensway. <laughs> well, we can do it in uh, half an hour, and on the OTC, I, I wouldn't like to try it. It, it would be at least an hour, an hour, maybe an hour and a quarter, I would think, in the, in the worst time. You are never going to be able to substitute buses for 100% of the cars. One should not even attempt to do so because it is extremely expensive. What we should try to do is to get as many people out of their cars as we can, as long as we can do this economically. Each car on the Queensway is taking approximately 1.4 people. And so in effect, we're, we're carrying the equivalent of something like 350 cars a day. The congestion like this doesn't occur that frequently uh, because we have tried to sort the number of buses out and the size of bus to meet the peculiar passenger demands. It's only courtesy of you fellows that uh, we're in fact in trouble tonight. When we set up the bus service we had quite a few people call us saying, uh, are you going to put this bus in because uh, if you don't, I'm going to have to buy another car. With no public transport at all, if the wife uh, wants to get out of the prison where she's living, she has to have another car. I moved out to Beacon Hill because I didn't have, because I, I had to have a relatively low cost housing. Uh, you move out to Beacon Hill, it's outside the city, we're in the, the township of Gloucester, and, and uh, you find that you have no, no transport to get into work. So you're forced either to using your own car or to um, form your carpool. And there were some negotiations going on with the city, but because we were in Gloucester, uh, there's the um, city of Ottawa that was involved, we just didn't have any service. Uh, and this is one of the problems we found, that, that the different levels of government that, that are involved. There's the 
uh, city, the township, the province, uh, the province controls the, the Queensway here, and there's also the federal government involved, uh, together with uh, the regional mis municipalities. Because of the very poor uh, layout of the community in, in terms of design of streets for a suitable collector service for a bus, we found it necessary to, in fact, break some of our runs into two sections, and we now use a very beautifully working uh, feeder bus service in, in some areas. People, it's perfectly true, think of it as their service, and so when it, uh, on one of those few occasions, something goes wrong, a bus blows a tire or something, it's thought of as their bus blowing a tire, and rather than being mad, they, 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 they're very understanding and tolerate the situation. Do you blow many tires? No, not one. <laughs> <laughs> you might get stuck in the old snow drift, but uh, that's about all. Studies previously have shown that people require luxury equipment to be induced to leave their cars at home and, and travel on public transit. Um, with all due respect to John, these are not luxury buses. They have uh, been designed to carry school children, uh, partly because we have such a small distance to go and, and the time is short that we're on it. We've found that the people have been attracted in droves to, to this equipment. We have found also that this equipment is extremely maneuverable in our fairly narrow suburban streets. It doesn't pose a problem in terms of blocking streets. Or residents are in fact used to a school bus circulating within the streets for school bus functions and they are quite prepared to accept it as a commuter bus. Don't you enjoy being picked up on the every night? Oh, yes. Right. It makes my day. I told you I could take it earlier, but so I wouldn't have half as much funny fight plugging um, the Fred. Frank. Who's the one before you? Frank. Frank. Couldn't bug him. Besides, he doesn't like going down Fillmore. Every time I got the bus, he always asks if there's anyone from Fillmore. <laughs> he tries to bypass it. I don't know how he could forget you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you. Sorry about that. Good night. Good night, bud. Good night, bud. I go first. She lives in Beacon Hill. She rides the Beacon Hill Express and she goes out with a Blackburn driver. Good night, John. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If we'd sat back and complained about the situation that we found ourselves in, we'd still be in our carpools today. I think we've shown that if you want something badly enough, you can get up and do something about it yourself instead of waiting for somebody else to do it for you. Here at least is one example of an urban experiment that can meet its own costs, which seems to provide some of the answers to our urban transportation problems. Within our own city, other communities have said, why can't we do the same thing?